All right. So, whole new campaign, whole new rules, a lot of homebrew, and especially the most important one is spellcrafting and a lot of that whole mechanic of the spell break and whatnot that I, I explained to you guys before. And as we begin our first session of this campaign, let me just paint you a small picture back here our story begins in the far bottom side of the world where Magic is not only glorified, it is practiced in almost day to day. Throughout the streets of the cities in the Sedalian Theocracy, you would find lamps made of entirely of magic steel, perhaps. Fires which don't end, roads that simply move according to the seasons. So if it snowed ever, if it ever snowed, and one side would be covered with snow, you would notice the road would slowly change to make sure that it's still clear and free of any kind of blockage. A handful of creatures that you won't see in a, any other place. Griffins and whatnot. Frost yearn often come, pass and by. Sometimes, even, you get a strange mix of Brandom and Boulder Breaker. Oftentimes, you find creatures like monkeys that fly and burn bright. But you can only find them at night. And oftentimes, you might even find a small rat capable of transforming itself into any creature that it looks at. A shapeshifter of some kind. But that is the place that we are going to explore as this goes on. A place known as the Sedalia Theocracy. A place where people think, perhaps even know, where magic was born. As our story begins, we start off in a small section of the college. The Songspire College of Magic and Mysticism. Or at least that's what they call it. To most, it's simply the college. To you, it is another trial sent out by those that have given you the task to become a full-fledged mage. Starting from... A man wearing a very, let's just say, rounded glasses, long white hair, and a handful of other accessories across his robe. Cal. You Hello? remember your father's face. Just like yours marveled with elven beauty you remember the elven court as they took you in their arms and as they raised you to make elven royal royalty proud and when you were sent away you remember the loving hands of your mother the warmth that they brought out as she said over there you won't feel the pressure of bloodline and you won't need to make anyone but yourself proud. You remember those words before the bright light within the halls darken. And you start seeing someone walk across a stage within the General Assembly Hall. Cap Sally. For a second you swear that you see an old man standing in front of you. 
a smile so eagerly plastered across his face, one of kindness and of peace. You see a small campfire in front of you, and with a stick, that old man stokes the, fl uh, the flames. You see his mouth move and no voice comes through, but regardless, you remember his words before you journeyed on. Fire is an untamed dance of energy, but the whispers, the crackling of the embers, they signal change for destruction and rebirth. In those ashes, you'll find peace. Before the lights darken within the hall, and you start seeing someone walk across the stage of a place they call the General Assembly. Philandi. As you start making your way across this very small hall, you see a handful of people. You see their movements, their hands, every step that they take. You already count to each step. You start to count how many people are within the room and you just about count about 117. 117 mages all just like you. You heard that no freshmen or at least none of the upperclassmen won't be here during the general assembly and that something would happen afterwards where speech would be played and another test would arrive. But that's for later. Right now, you remember simply the fundamental laws of magic. The ability for you to cast it through your bloodline. And oftentimes you remember how hard it was, the trials that were given to you. How within the 271 students, only three passed. One of them was you. The rest were killed for being far too weak. That is how it works within the kingdom of Nak. And that is how you survived. But so far, you've yet to finish that trial. As you watch someone walk across the halls, as the place darkens through, and an old, wizened man, with a beard long enough to reach all the way towards his chest, slowly walks to the center. Ataro. It seems hard for you to recognize a handful of people here, though you believe that you should, seeing as you come from a great family. A family whose name is engraved in every single bit of this school. You look up towards the balusters, the banners, and just as you look to your right hand side, you see the symbol of your family, Great Flares, it says there, with lights shining through it, magic coursing through even the cloth that it weaves. Your family is one of renowned wizards. Even your cousins, far from your line, learn the intricacies of magic in ways that no one else could. And you, instead of just simply doing magic, you decided to learn, to study. And so here you are. Though a recommendation had been given to you, you are more than capable, or so you believe, knowing exactly what would happen right after this speech. As a man slowly walks up towards the center of the room, the halls darken, and you hear a booming voice slowly pour through. As Supreme Magi of the illustrious Songspire College of Magic and Mysticism, it is with great pleasure and honor that I welcome you to a brand new academic year, filled with boundless possibilities, enchanting discoveries, and the pursuit of magical excellence. 
as he says those words one by one from re left to right would you kindly introduce your characters and give a small description of what kind of mage you are in character or out of a character up to you wait define how kind of mage we are you decide what that means to you. I am dead. Ataro <laughs> is a uh, great tiefling with uh, whitish hair. Uh, he seems very refined given his uh, noble upbringing. Uh, you can tell he has like some sort of sophisticated air around him. He has that sort of maybe somewhat subtle uh, I am better than you uh, look on his face. Uh, but he keeps it to himself, and it looks like he's just as uh, earnest to uh, begin his time in the college as uh, everybody else. Uh, for the most part, though, it doesn't look like he wants to bring too much attention to himself, but, you know, he also doesn't want to be left out uh, on his own, so he uh, makes himself look presentable, and for those who know, no, you know, so. Okay. And so, the speech continues as this wizened old man starts to talk. You see a handful of people slowly make their way across the stage, and you know them to be instructors, seeing as they're wearing the sigils of the school. In the embrace of these ancient walls, where the very stones hum with the echoes of countless spells, and the air dances with the promise of arcane wonders, we gather to embark on a journey of knowledge, growth, and camaraderie. Whether you are returning students or fresh faces, eager to immerse yourself in the enchanting, in the enchanting tapestry of magical education, know that you are now part of a legacy that spans centuries. A legacy of wisdom, innovation, in the unyielding pursuit of the arcane arts. Capsali. Yikes. Um, <clears throat> if Ataro is noble, Capsali is on the other side of that spectrum. She's like unrefined, you know. She's never been to anything high class. So in this area, she looks like a lost child. But from her appearance, from her uh, po po posture alone, you can tell that she has a bit of experience from her with her magic. Uh, you can tell from her uh, burns on the right side of her body, though, that she has had an incident with that ma with that said magic. That's it. Okay. And so the speech continues as he begins to introduce himself. Not that it matters to most of you, seeing as you've already heard his name countless of times being spoke across the entire halls. They call him Supreme Magi Ustrum Umarium. One of the first lines that isn't under the dynasty of the Song Spires but was put into power due to his incredible skill in magic. At least most of you know that. Many of you, with all your glory, have finished your mage trials, Mede Spiriclum, and now stand before the college as novice mages. We welcome you all to a brand new start in the pursuit of knowledge and power. This year, Songspire stands as a beacon of enlightenment, offering you not only the keys to unlock the mysteries of the arcane, but also a sanctuary for those who dream of bending the very fabric of reality itself. Within these hallowed halls, you will find mentors who are not just instructors, but guiding lights, ready to illuminate the path of your magical journey. And you watch as instructors start to pour through left and right side of the stage, 
making themselves pretty well known. A handful of them have magical symbols on their arms that glow in an almost bright orange that just almost burns through your eyes when they first come through the stage. But as that happens, Cal. Uh, secluded from the world, uh, my my ambition is to uh, make everyone aware of Elven magic and help the advancement of the magic uh, research research in magic amongst uh, everyone else, everyone else to help prevent calamities that have, calamities that has happened. Uh, before and the recent ones that would be all all right and one by one you hear the instructors start to pretty much introduce themselves though their names are covered with the noise of the people slowly shouting out you ha you see a handful of students in front of you a handful of them are fans seemingly of the teachers in front and some of you also might know these faces um those that would like to see if they can remember go ahead and roll me the first rolls of the campaign let's go history checks oh i am bad with history i would try um, wait my my character actually i'm not that terrible seven but i will uh <laughs> Use my thing. <laughs> Magical guidance. All right. Only Let's see the reroll. History. Thirteen. Hey, look, that's your advantage right there. <laughs> All right. Let me Talandi, change my rolls again. All you know is that these people were. Regarded as heroes in some areas of the world. Cal and Ataro, on the other hand, you know some of their names, but not all of them. Among them, for example, is a teacher who once, let's say, fought against one particular dragon in the Far East. Another is one that had fought against a handful of the undead pouring through within a place that they would call the Grand Duchy of Faversham, off towards the other continent, far to the east as well. A lot of these teachers, nonetheless, have a kind of aura to them, in a way that you can tell that among them are powerful mages one of them who's just about in the center of this place uh, among the instructors is a person by the name of madam glass stem you hear that she is the instruction uh, the instructor of the voxymancy course the magic of words essentially and powerful enough to have trapped a certain dragon under into the abyss with simply words there are handfuls of those people here and some of them stand before you as slowly the speech continues on and you start to see people start to quiet down This year, promises, challenge, and triumph, both academic and personal. You will unravel the secrets of ancient tomes, master the intricate gestures of spells, and forge bonds that transcend the boundaries of tradition and origin. The Songspire community is a tapestry of talents, and together we shall create a symphony of magical mastery. In pursuit of knowledge, let curiosity be your guide, and in the face of challenge, 
let resilience be your companion. As Supreme Magi, I challenge each and every one of you not only to excel in your chosen fields, but to contribute to the collective wisdom that defines the Songspire College. May this academic year be one of awe-inspiring revelation, steadfast friendships, and a triumph of magic in all its glorious forms. Welcome, dear students, to the Songspire College of Magic and Mysticism, where the echoes of the arcane await your discovery. As the speech starts to come to a close, Kalandi. Hello. So, Talandi looks aloof. He doesn't seem interested in the speech at all. In fact, he's probably distracted by something else. Or he's just uncomfortable at the current atmosphere because he can't really tell if, uh, you know, like what he's supposed to do and everything else. But he does uh, look around and see the powerful mages and show great interest in learning from them. Hello. That was it. Suspense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was more. Suspense. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, um, yeah, the speech comes to a close, and you start to hear the last few words of those speech uh, of the speech itself. As the as the supreme magi slowly starts to tell people to come off of the stage, he continues on. Let the magic within you flourish, and may your journey through the realms of knowledge be as enchanting as the very essence of Songspire itself. Thank you, and embrace the magic that lies ahead. That is at least the speech I was told to give. This is the trial that I meant to relay. Today, we have a little more than a hundred mages, many recommended, others passing their trials. But we all know that magic comes without sacrifice. We simply take from the weave, or so those without knowledge believe. The truth is, we all must deal with the consequences of our power. And for this day, a hundred and more students will be reduced to less than 20. Within this day alone, you will start to see who truly is a student of the Songspire College and who simply got lucky. As you start to see um, essentially the stage almost flatten out, an, illusor, uh, an illusionary terrain slowly pours out and you see the entire hall was never there to begin with and everywhere around you is an open field. You start to see a handful of trees in one area, a large amount of kind of rocks and stones on one side, and slowly you are met with a large road just in front of you. And just before anything happens, Let me just do this real quick. A few of you start to notice the students start disappearing in front of you. Some kind of teleportation spell. You watch them just blink, disappear in front of your eyes. And you start to see that only four of you are left in the middle of this road, slowly leading out. 
as I put you across the map, would you kindly put your tokens down right in the middle and roll initiative? Oh god. Which one? Do I mode. click? Oops. <clears throat> yep, let me just put up this thing. Are you 7 or 10? I used the. I rolled again because I saw the macro. Looks cool. Yeah, you're gonna be using the first one. Okay. So, 10 here. Damn, some of you rolled really good. He's not supposed to be there. Damn, how do you guys use the macro? Wait, where's it's a default two? macro. Oh, it's in bar. <laughs> 16. Alright. You start to see people just slowly appearing in front of you through some kind of magic. Doors that slowly open out of nowhere and light passing through behind them. As the four of you pretty much know what this is, essentially. It's some kind of trial, and you're in the middle of it. Let me real quick do some initiative rolls. Cap Sally, with a massive 22 for initiative, you are first. All right. I wasn't not I wasn't I wasn't not ready. I wasn't ready. Um Shield in one hand and an open hand on the other. Is this a open wall? Yes. That's my speed again. Alright. She'll run over towards the closest one she can find. To attempt to get this uh, attention so that the others can fight the others. She will summon, she will conjure a flaming sphere. Well, how does this work again? Right on top of it. Is that the legendary flaming sphere? <laughs> oh no <laughs> all right i will make a token for you to move around um let's just see uh oh initiative oh. is gone oh yeah it, i can pop it up and out that's but a nice orb. There you go. orb very i'll nice give orb. you control of that then you can move it around now there you go i will summon this thing wait Well, I guess I'll summon it not in, on top of it, but I'll summon it next to it and then ram it into it with a bonus action. Okay. Um, and whenever you ram it, that is a saving throw. What, it, what kind of saving throw is that? Against the sphere's damage. Uh, it doesn't no, that save. just means um, whatever the saving throw was originally. So that's a dexterity saving throw. Oh, there it is. 13. I believe that's a pass. Yikes. That's a half damage, I believe. Yep, that is half damage as you throw your uh, flaming spear right across uh, to it. And you watch as they just kind of jump off towards the left-hand side, dodging away from your sphere. Um... Roll for damage real quick. That is... Oh, you already did. That's five. Five half. There you go. All right. As that happens, Capsali, anything else you would like to do? Unfortunately, 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 I cannot do anything else. That is my Okay. Time. Off towards the north. 
You watch as this mage starts to transform something within her hands. And you watch as they open it for a quick moment. And in an instant, magic missiles just start to fly across towards you guys. That is... Oh, no. Hmm? Can I counterspell? Okay. You will use your reaction to counterspell. Wait, what do I roll? You don't need to roll. You just use your reaction to do that. And as you use your reaction, any spell of third level or lower basically disappears. And as the missiles start to fly across towards you guys, um, the elf to your left hand side, Talandi, starts casting his own. Immediately you watch as the magic missiles just disappear into the air. And they start to move across. <clears throat> just to over here. Talandi, it is your turn. Guess I have to do this. I start chanting. My eyes start glowing. It seems I'm repairing something. My choice is multiple of four, and I cast Mage Armor. Multiple of four, you say? Yep. <coughs> what did you do? So initiative? That... Yeah, let's go initiative. So, me. Uh, Cal, and then, yeah, unless, uh, unless Kapsali has his HP, uh, her HP, or AC, a multiple of four. I'm not Multiple of four. Let includes us see. enemies. Good luck, Cass. <laughs> Dubai, Dubai. That includes no, the AC as well, that. right? Yeah, yeah, it includes AC, so they also get AC. You watch it as just... all of the enemies across the field oh, instantly no! <laughs> gain mage armor, just out of nowhere. Yikes. Just say, like, they gain, like, a plus three to AC. No, the mage three. armor is 13 plus its dexterity modifier, so that's yep. what's going to happen. Uh, okay. as out of nowhere, you watch as they just kind of look at their own hands, already covered with some kind of mage armor. You just made it harder for yourself. Yep, I did. But I did give mage armor to myself and to Cal. So Cal now modifier. has mage armor. That's two. So. Damn, okay. This is going to be a bit harder for you guys now. Just a little bit. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I won't move. All right, Cal, it is your turn. Um, I think I'll cast Blur on myself. <clears throat> uh, before that, Capsali, you also gain ma uh, mage armor. Nice, nice. How does this yep. work? Just uh, additional armor. Faster. Wait, Capsali. Um, everyone, I think, gains magical armor. Yeah. Multiple of what? Multiple of four. four. My AC? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wait, how does this work? Oh, no, no, no. Wait, so it affects people with, a with AC of multiple of four or? Yes. yes. Okay. So everyone everyone within the field <laughs> just gains magic armor. <laughs> you guys I aren't mean, wearing any armor, right? Uh, I think am I, I am. Yeah, I, I am. don't think. Am I? Yeah, we're mages. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm wearing armor. Oh, you are? Then you it just fails on Capsali. It wouldn't have done anything anyway. <laughs> 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 like when my AC yeah. is like, it just turns into my AC anyway. Okay. All right. So with that, Let's Cal, in mind. you cast Blur upon yourself, and you watch as he just starts becoming extremely foggy, almost. Um, anything else you'd like to do, Cal? Uh, 
I would probably reposition myself here. That would be it. All right. As this one up on the far corner here starts to make their move. Um, Cap Sally, would you like to remember? Uh, would you kindly tell me if your orb deals damage at the start of their turn or at the end of their turn? It's at the end. It's at the end. End its right. turn. Yep, so they can move away. Yeah, um, the only way you could just leave the damage is by ramming it on them. Yep. Yeah. Unless they're trapped in some way. And yeah, you watch as this one in the far corner immediately starts casting a spell, reaches out towards um, you in particular, Capsali. Make me. Let's see, a wisdom saving throw. Yikes. Yikes. Oh. Immediately within that split second, you feel your entire body contract as you feel a hand clasp around your entire body and you are held in place. Dumb. Dumb indeed. And they start moving out just over here. This other one, on the other hand, starts to run off right behind you. And in that same step, casts a spell, reaching off towards Capsali. <laughs> Being targeted. And I believe since you are paralyzed. paralyzed, it's pretty much just crit damage. So you take one, two. Wow, that's actually both crits. Wow. Um, you take two of those and one reaches out and just kind of curves towards the right hand side, heading for Ataro. Another crit. Holy. Another. <laughs> Ouch. Weighted dice. Yep, weighted dice. With that, Ataro, as you are hit with a magic missile, just breaking through a bit of your magic armor cast by this strange flaming man behind you. What are you doing? Uh, question. This is difficult terrain, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I look at the, I look at the, uh, the rest of the party and I just give a sigh. <sighs> Must I do everything myself? And I dash for my action here and for my bonus action i will use quicken spell and then cast a lightning bolt damn all right on these two i was hoping this guy wasn't gonna move so i could hit three but oh uh, i will cast it now DC 15, dexterity saving throw for the both of them. You watch as they try to evade out of that bolt of lightning just passing by. Um, this one is on the front. Absolutely oh passes, God. just runs out oh of my that God, way. That's a fourth crit in a row. And this other one in the backhand side. <laughs> does not pass, just immediately <laughs> takes the full brunt of that lightning. I do believe it's uh, on a fail, it's still half damage. Yes. yes. So, um, wait, my brain's not working. Half of 32 is what? 16. 16, all right. In an instant, you watch as they just immediately get bolted through. Even the one that jumps out of the way of that bolt still gets hit in the leg and you watch him just kind of scream in agony for a quick second um and looks like they're not looking too good this one on the back though as soon as you cast that spell poof, you watch them disappear in a thin light Ooh. <clears throat> um ataro anything else you'd like to do 
Uh, nothing. That is my turn. All right. Then the mage in front of you that managed to dodge out of your lightning bolt turns quickly towards you. You hear them mutter something. Um, roll me a perception check. Okay. Yikes. Wait, I will use magical <laughs> guidance to roll again. Okay, so I now no, use. It's an. Oh yeah, it's I've used four check. points at this point, so I only have one point left. I'm going to use it again. Don't even, even worse. <laughs> I will. I will tell you that the first one would have passed, <laughs> but no. You see Hello. them kind of reaching into their coat and doing something, but you're not sure what's happening. Um, and immediately, they turn towards you. Immediately, they just run up in front of your face, reaching out with their hand and sh grasps your shoulder. Um, an 18, will that hit Miles your new AC? That will hit my new AC, yes. All right, then in an instant, you feel lightning passing through your shirt, breaking, um, yeah, breaking that magic armor even more so. Oh, man. As afterwards, you watch them just kind of give you a small smile as they disappear into a thin light. Leaving only two. Cap Sally, you can now make, I believe, oh, a wisdom saving throw. throw. And you pass. You watch as nice. I mean, you feel as the hands around you start loosening and you drop to the floor as you turn towards the enemies in front of you. I'm all right. I'm, I'm good now. That is up Sally picks herself up from the floor. I can't do anything else because that's an end of the turn thing. Okay. Talandi, back up to you. I move up here and I just cast uh, Cure Wounds on Cup Sally. Eleven. Yep, Sally, you feel your wounds start to disappear and close up as this flaming man behind you starts casting his own spell. Cal. I would try to... Hmm. I would try to just fireball uh, this person, like the one below me. Here, the one here. All right. Um, Wait, we have a spell attack. Yep, yep. On a 12, that would have been a glancing blow, but you watch your firebolt fly across and just bounce off that mage armor. <laughs> oh, oops. I glare at the fireman. <laughs> now, you watch as up above, you hear footsteps right behind you, Cal. Running right behind up to over here before immediately casting a spell that flies off across to the three of you on the bottom left. One for each, that is Magic Missile. That's two on Capsali, five on uh, Talandi, and three on you, Cal. As you watch the Magic Missile just break through your, mag uh, your mage armor. Can oh, I can't anymore, right? I can't talk this bit. Mm. Yep, too late. Can I do this? Um, it, it just passes through. No matter what kind of shield you cast in front of you, it made uh, it just makes its way around it. Hmm. 
even though I have blur. I, I'll take 10 damage total. No, you take 3, I believe. Yeah, 3. Uh, Capsali, you take 2, and Talandi, you take 5. As now, this one to the, f the bottom end of the bottom end of the entire kind of field that you're on. You watch as they also start casting a spell, start muttering something, and you start to feel, um, this is on Talandi, you start to feel something. Uh, you start to feel like this whole situation isn't exactly going right, but nonetheless, make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Um, actually, make me a saving throw with advantage. Oh, with advantage? I'll just roll it again. Oh, it's 12. <laughs> Alright, on a 12, unfortunately, that is not enough as you look towards this one down here. And you feel like you're friends. You're not fighting it. As you have been charmed. Charm. Oh. Okay. I have no enemies. <laughs> <laughs> you actually have no enemies. Except for maybe the one up north. Ataro, your go. Uh, does either one of them look injured? The one on the, the top has a few minor injuries, but nothing too major. Very well. I will... Point at both of them, uh, and cast a Scorching Ray at the third level. Wait, no, can I? Probably not. Oh, I can, but I didn't do it. Oh, well. Scorching Ray. Oh, it's Ray one on fire. this, two on this. All right, go ahead. That is, uh, the first one is a hit. Um, immediately you watch as you burn this one up on the far top, uh, north of Cal. Um, and they are seemingly still alright, even oh, through that. Wait, do I have to roll multiple times? Yes. The, the yes. It's for every ray. Oh, okay. That goes through the magic armor oh my the God. on the bottom hand. Both times, just burning rays fly across. And they don't know anything more than that. 14 damage, just massive. As immediately you watch them almost fall over. As soon as your spell ends, you watch them on the floor, scorching around them. Um, the floor is essentially singed. But they still are alive. Oh, wow. End my turn. Actually, no, I'll duck under the bushes. <laughs> End my turn. <laughs> All right. Capsali. <clears throat> Capsali reaches out for the flaming orb and rams it into the creature on the right. All right, that's another uh, dexterity saving throw, if I remember correctly. And yep. absolutely fails. Does not know. Uh, does not see this thing coming across the field. Um, just flies thing. through across. Five fire damage. All right. Immediately as this thing hits, just barely connects with the creature, it disappears into a thin light. I can I I can also do what you just did. Uh, scorching ray. <laughs> On that one Whoa. single creature. Holy! Oh my god! All right, you don't even have to roll. As soon as you start casting your spell, you watch the flame slowly fly towards it, almost like in a slow motion. And in that split second, you watch as the light disappears. Um, and all of you find yourselves back in the hall. Oh. You look around you, 
and you notice that among the freshmen, only 10 remain. From 100 plus, 10, including you guys, a total of about 14, for now at least. Only you guys remain. And you see the mages that you were fighting earlier stand before you. They cast a spell and their robes change back. And you notice them to be the instructors that you, you just saw earlier on stage. You watch as they all start talking to each other. Just kind of muttering um, under their breath. Um, if anyone would like to he try and hear what they're saying... Yes. Roll me a perception check. Same. Same. I will not reroll this. Perception. Perception. Hey, you guys are rolling high. I'm just, I'm just mediocre here. Everyone for uh, everyone except for Capsali. Um, Capsali. Only you can hear this clearly. The conversation being hidden underneath robes and whatnot. With your goblin senses, you hear a bit more than the rest. And you start to hear praises coming from the instructors. You hear them talk about a certain... Um, a certain Yardius Balwarum. One of his kind, a dragonborn right across you. Then he starts talking about... An Illidae with grey skin, the one you just fought with earlier. Um, they regard him as talented, it would seem. And they start talking about um, an elf, the elf that you were fighting with earlier. And they start to praise him, even for his royal bloodline, it would seem. And for the entirety of this whole kind of conversation, you watch as they seemingly start... To write down a handful of things on their notes and in front of each of you as as they're writing down you see small tokens start to drop into your hands and as all of you start to reach and catch it um a taro yes you gain three score oh. three Holy shit, that's a I lot. I to that's add... Capsali, you gain one score. Oh. Cal, you gain two score. Talandi, hey. you gain one score. And you see a handful of other people start to reach and catch their tokens in hand. Um, as seemingly, you have been given a handful of things in mind. As the instructors start to kind of come across the entire stage, slowly making their way down, they greet everyone just kind of one by one. And they start just kind of, you know, just giving you a handshake, um, welcoming you to the school, uh, the Songspire College of Magic. As they just kind of give you that small handshake, and you hear some of them even kind of give you small praises. You did good. Uh, you did well. And immediately they start leaving. Except for one. The Supreme Mage in front of you still stands, giving you small smiles. A hundred plus students. Reduced to only 15. As it should be. As you watch him turn towards the door behind you, the two double doors leading outside to the main halls. All of you are welcome to this school. And all of you have proven that you have what it takes to be a student in the Songspire College. Welcome to you, one and all. As you watch him slowly disappear, just kind of walking off the stage and then disappearing right behind the curtains. And right after that, um... Taro, where do you think you would be within this kind of small, uh, within the hall? Uh, probably somewhat close to the front, 
but like near to the side of the front, if you get what I mean, like one of the sides. Yeah, yeah. Maybe close to one of the entrances or exits. Yeah, sure. And um, as as you're kind of there, you 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 feel something kind of bump your arm, and you you watch um, as this woman just kind of starts making her way across. Um, as she intentionally bumps your arm, um, hopefully you can see this. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 Yo, oh, what? Yo, calm down. She, no. she kind of bumps your arm, and you watch. She just kind of has has a very kind of um, wide open smile, um, and she reaches out her hand uh, to kind of give you a handshake. Um, hi, uh, my name's Eliza Castile. I'm a freshman enrolling for the cartomancy course. You know what that is, right? Eliza. Uh, greetings. The name is Ataro Great Flair, darling. I put out my hand. And uh, of she, House Great Flair. You, you would know the name, yes? She eagerly just kind of reaches for your hand. Um, she doesn't seem to... Uh, you can tell that she knows the name and she kind of looks up towards the banners where your name is but she doesn't seem to worry too much about your upbringing and more so to meet everyone around her as she kind of reaches her hand um you just kind of gives you a shake um and she's she gives you a small kind of happy smile since you are here unlike the rest of the people that were here earlier um especially those beside me and she kind of turns to her left and you notice that there are essentially no one there it's the two of you and a handful of people on the right hand side and everyone on the left hand side is gone she just kind of up oh, i guess we're going to be good friends from now on and she just gives you a um a nice kind of shake and she immediately afterwards she just kind of moves on to the next person um you know introduces herself and just kind of does all that i do the what do you call it uh i forgot the shinji look at hand thing Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Can I disintegrate you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, and, well, in truth, Atara probably doesn't really care, so he's just—I uh, don't know—he just brushes us off and like looks at his three tokens, admires them a lot, like a lot, and then uh, probably just stays in the hall for a bit, just admiring his tokens. There's a score rather. Okay, and after a while, um, Talandi, you watch as that same that same woman just kind of makes her way across towards you, reaches for your hand, and immediately notices that you're on fire. Reach uh, pu pulls back her hand, and casts a spell. Um, you watch as she takes okay. up a, a notebook, immediately rips out a piece of paper, and folds it into what seemingly is just a roll of paper. And she starts casting a spell, and you watch as the piece of paper transforms into a hand that reaches out to you. And for a quick second, she goes, Hi, I'm Eliza Castile. Nice to meet you. Um, hi. The name's Tal. And do you give the piece of paper a handshake? Yep. It burns. <laughs> It, it actually burns. does not. As you reach out oh, towards a piece it. of paper, and you would think it would burn within that split second you touch it, and she just kind of looks at you and goes, Oh, don't worry. Magical piece of paper. My doing. You see, I'm from the... I will be, at least, um, joining the cartomancy course. You know what that is, right? Not really. You know, the paper magic. Um, you know how scrolls are made? All that stuff, yeah, that's um, what I'm trying to learn, at the very least. And uh, mm. you? <laughs> uh, me? Oh, my name's uh, Tal. Um, I'm all about numbers. That's it. Can I get your number, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, 
No, she just charisma, she just charisma <laughs> Mancy. Yeah, charisma. Charisma <laughs> Mancy. Uh, and she just kind of gives a small nod, uh, kind of pulling out away the piece of paper, transforms back into just a regular piece of paper in her hand, and she kind of keeps it on her in her pocket. Um, yeah, I know that kind of magic, uh, numbers and whatnot. Um, dialectum, right? Yes. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, I have a good friend, actually, who's also a dialectomancer. Um, he is an upper class, though, so I doubt that you'll meet him. Um, but nonetheless, um, you might you might come across him. He's a good mentor. His name is Rabran. I'll remember the name. And she just gives you a sm uh, small smile. Well, Wait, that's her um, mentor, right? No, that's, uh, no, that's her a mentor friend. who... Yeah. It's a senpai. Yep, a senpai. Yeah, essentially. And she just kind of looks out around to, to the rest of the people who she hasn't met yet and starts, uh, you know, she gives you a quick wave goodbye as she continues to just meet everyone across the halls. And yeah, what are you guys doing while all this is happening? Hmm. Question, Cass, I have a question. What's mm -hmm. the difference between the Hey, what? A point and a score. What do you mean, point? You gave me a point last session? No, I gave you a score last session. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. this is still just a score. Okay, okay. Alright. I am good. Okay. Uh, I thought I was probably just uh, fiddling with his scores. Yeah, they look like essentially like very very small tokens. Like um, our version, uh, our our version would be like the centavos, you know, the very small ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but okay. they're they're very small and they can just fit in your pocket, you know, very easily. And you might lose them very easily as well. Uh oh, I'm gonna put them back in my pocket then. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you see a handful of people there within the field. Um, you see. You see a, f a few females, a few uh, female humans, um, one particular Draylon, a goblin in the far corner. You see an elf, a handful of uh, a handful of Voda Priads. Those are the water elementals. Not th those people don't quite mix well with your kind, uh, Talandi. But nonetheless, yep, I notice. Um, you know that. They're twins of sorts. You watch as they're kind of connected on their like their hands, um, but they're like they're, they're always holding each other's hand pretty much. And you watch as they kind of meld into water and in most of their body parts. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's cool. I'm gonna saying... avoid them. Yeah, they're on the far side of the corner. And as all of this is happening, you watch as one particular instructor makes her way across to the field, uh, rather to the stage. And you watch as she just kind of makes herself known as she shouts out, Listen, everyone make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, she's like an order cleric or something. Wait, no, never mind, it's just command. Nah, I pass. Wisdom nah, saving pass. throw. I <laughs> nah, I'd win. Nah, I nah, lose. <laughs> Damn. Nah, Cap Sally. I am um, very keenly listening. You watch as everyone, Same. like, as they're, like, kind of talking, everyone's attention immediately turns towards the person there uh, in the center. Except for Cap Sally. Capsali, you watch as just everyone kind of turns their heads almost in an instant. You, on the other hand, are quite confused where everyone is looking. And the instructor in the middle kind of gives you a small smile. Well, it looks as though someone here is quite talented. Perhaps you might be one of my students. But that is for oh. a later time. Release. In an instant, you feel your body just kind of loosen up. You can move your head and your entire hands along, and she t turns quickly towards each and every one of you. You may have heard my name while all of this was happening, 
My name is Madame Glass Stem. I am the Voxymancy instructor. And I would like to say, apparently, a powerful one at that. Everyone here has managed to be enthralled by that simple spell. All except for this one particular goblin. To that, I give you my commendation. And she turns and quickly looks at each and every one of you. You have passed for now. But later on, there will be more. Tournaments, trials, tribulations. For now, each of you will be dressed accordingly. And she kind of looks towards the air um, above you guys, just kind of the small space above you guys. And she just looks out. She opens her mouth for a quick moment. Reveal. And everything above you just kind of slowly disappears as a handful of clothes start uh, kind of clothing piles start to fly down towards in uh, towards you guys one by one just kind of slowly making their way across those are your robes they're essential for us instructors to know which ones are students and which ones are problems and i will show this to you right now <clears throat> Ooh. I'm sick. drawing this later. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. I, as it's being uh, delivered, Ataro like raises his hand. Uh, excuse me, uh, may I have my uh, bespoke? <laughs> she looks towards you with a kind of a strange look. And what do you mean by that, Mr. Great Flair? Uh, uh, tailored to my uh, specific dimensions, if you would be so kind. Mr. Gl Great Flair, as much as we'd like to accommodate every one of your noble expectations, as long as you're within the school, everyone is of equal standing, equal ground. You have the magical capabilities to transform this clothing of yours as they are already doing. And you watch as a handful of students are already trying to tamper with um, the robes. Um, they're casting their own spells. You watch as one particular female human starts like putting bits of plants around her own robe. Um, another one, the Draylon, just kind of adds, you know, a bit of steel and metal across his. And he, she kind of turns towards you. You may do so, whatever you wish, with those robes, so long as they retain their original forms. Very well. And I don the robes. Uh, I try filling with it too. Seems like whenever I cast like a specific type of element of magic, my my I guess my my robe like sort of glows in a spectral color. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so if I cast fire magic, it turns red. You know something like Gaming that. robes, basically RGB robes. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, she kind of turns towards the right hand side. Everyone, look towards your right side, towards the tables near the walls. And as you do so, small chests start to appear. This will be gifts to you students from us instructors for what's to come ahead of you. As each and every one starts to make their way towards the chest, they open it and they receive something it seems. And as do all of you. Everyone make me uh, roll a 1d20. Oh, I don't like random rolls. Ataro 12, Talandi 18, nice. Yep. I like that one. 15, that's also pretty decent. And a 6. Yeah, yes. That's... Never mind, that's a joke. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty alright, actually. Alright. Ataro, as you open your chest, inside is a small medal. There is a uh, there is a etching of a spell book in the middle of that medal. And let me send this to you through. I, I'm not sure if this will work right, but I'll just send this to you. Um, oh, this is the random this? magic item we get. Yeah. Yes. Nice. 
the free loot crate. Um, yeah, it's a loot crate. I'll send this to you through Discord because I don't know if it will work well in um, Roll20. So I'll do that. That is what you receive. Talandi. Um, an 18. I like this one. Yep. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, there you go. Might be certain death. Um, boom. You see inside a medal with a small lockpick on the etching. Oh, wow. Okay. Cap Sally. 15. This one is probably the best one for... Um, for certain situations. Here you go. And lastly, Cal. This one, um... Would work well on someone else aside from you. <laughs> okay, Lenny. <clears throat> All right. You can um, trade. <laughs> yeah, Capsali, <laughs> yours has a... It's a medal, and in the middle of it, it seems to be like a image of a token etched into the medal. As for... Um, as for Cal, yours looks like a musical note, uh, just kind of etched into the, met uh, the metal of the coin, or the metal rather. And you hear immediately after you start getting yours and a few kind of people start looking at it kind of strange. Um, you hear the instructor, Madam Glass, kind of look towards you. These medals, after they're used will transform into a non-magical item right afterwards. So, essentially, it is a one-time use, a one-time gift to all of you. So whatever you receive, do with it what you wish. Right afterwards, you watch as everyone kind of returns back to their original post, just kind of scattered around the center of the hall. Now that you have essentially received everything accordingly, you will be sent to meet with your second and third courses. The first will be of your choosing later down the line. And these second and third courses will be a group course. One that everyone among the freshmen will join together. That would be Signature Magic Creation Course A and Practical Magic Application Course. Kindly make your way through the middle doors there in the center, and she kind of points towards the exit doors, leading supposedly towards uh, just the open field outside. And, and she kind of turns towards that doors. Once you make your way through, you will find yourselves within Signature Magic Course Creation, uh, Signature Magic Creation Course A, and you will meet your secondary instructor. All right. I just head head there too. Yep. Same. Same. Okay. Right. As as you start making your way towards there, um, anything you guys would like to do before you head your uh, you know head out. Mm. Are there any points of interest as we're heading towards the next location? All across this room is a handful of things, let's say. On one corner, you see a blue box. Just kind of floating above um, what seems to be a small pedestal. On another hand, um, you see a small door fit for only the smallest of people. Probably a goblin or less, a smaller. And on one hand, a loot of sorts, just kind of floating across the field, uh, across the hall, just kind of making its way left and right. Hmm. 
Hmm. I look around me and I see that the others seem interested. I'm not, so I just keep going. <laughs> I'm interested in the floating thing, so I'm gonna walk towards the blue floating blue box. Alright. As you make your way towards the floating box, you watch as a dwarf slowly makes his way there too. He looks towards it, then looks towards you, then looks towards it. So you're interested in it, huh? A little less interested and more uh, slightly amused. Uh, it's not very uh, common you see a, a floating box in the middle of a hall. Actually, it's of my creation. And he kind of reaches towards it and you watch it just kind of unfold into a mat. <laughs> that right there is what you would call a mobile crafting station made by none other than myself. Nice and you. you would be? Vigrin of Clan Hearthbreaker is my name. Oh. Uh, Augers. Does does my does my character know of this uh this guy based on like I guess family politics or something? Yes, you would in fact, and your the Great Flare family actually curates a handful of things from the Hearthbreaker clan of dwarves. Ah, so you're a Hearthbreaker. I believe uh, you will know then of the Great Flares. Yes, I am a Taro Great Flare. A pleasure. No, of course. Nice to meet you, Mr. Ataro. No greater than myself and my clan. And he reaches out to your hand, gives it a firm shake, and he looks towards the cube. <clears throat> this is the first of its kind. And probably the first that I'll create and display here for a while. Until, of course, I can upgrade it to a sorts. This particular cube is quite worth it if you would like to buy it from me as much as uh, i am uh, uh, astonished by the degree of craftsmanship of display i am unfortunately not capable of wielding the uh, tools within this box so uh, thank you but no thank you ah well nonetheless here have this and you watch him reach for his pocket. This kind of gives you a uh, small ship. Small ship-sized thing. He just kind of reaches out to you. That right there is a uh, gift from my family to yours. Just as a sign of friendship. Uh, quick question, guys. Are we allowed to give scores to other people? No, you're not. Oh, okay. I was going to give one to him, but... You can I'm gonna try, look at the ship. actually. I could try? Yeah. Mm, I look at the... I could figure it. Uh, I'm not entirely too sure how this uh, works, but uh, if you would, I would uh, bequeath to you uh, one of my score. And I, ho I hold over one of the tokens. Oh, and he kind of reaches his hand out, attempting to grab it. And do you give it to him? Yes. As soon as you put it on his hand, it disappears and you feel your pocket getting slightly heavier. Oh. Well, it would seem as though we're not allowed to share. Unfortunate. Please take this as a, a gesture of goodwill. Uh, I hope you understand that that was my intention, of course. And he gives you a great smile. Ah, of course. Family to family, we are one of the best. And he gives you a uh, nod. I will look at the ship. I look back at Vigrin, give him a nod, and walk to the next classroom. I will admire the ship as I walk. All right. And yeah. Um, while you're doing that, uh, everyone, you watch as everyone also starts to make their way towards the doors. And they disappear into a thin light almost as soon as they reach for the handles. And um, if and no one else is going to do anything here, we'll move on to the next area. Oh, sure. Wow. Yep. 
All right. So, as soon as you open those doors, you find yourself already sitting down in the middle of a small hall. Chairs made of wood, books right in front of you, large books in fact, probably enough to be considered an atlas to most people. And in the middle of that entire area is an orc. A particularly blind orc. As you can see, two of his eyes are completely white. One eye completely missing, in fact. And you watch this orc just kind of look towards, or rather his face kind of moving left and right, almost scanning the room. If he could see, it would matter. But this one particularly is just rather strange. As he puts his hand down towards the small pedestal in front of him, um, <clears throat> each seat can fit two people. Would any of you like to sit with each other? Uh, hmm. I'd like to sit I'll at sit, the front. Yeah, I'll sit towards the front. If there's any free, uh, no, like whether it's like free with one person or not, I guess since I'm coming late. I'll probably be sitting beside, uh, what do you call it? I'll probably sitting beside Cal, if there's a free seat beside Cal. Okay, so you're sitting in front. Um, and yeah, there is a free seat in front of Cal. So you you just like, stand up, make your way towards you, uh, him and Ataro. And Cal, is you're in the front seat. Is there one next to uh, Ataro? There is not. It's the two peop uh, two person seats. Like what you see there on the uh, image. Okay. Uh, Cap Sally, you have any choice of seats? Uh, somewhere on the back. <laughs> All right. I'll and... just sit next to Cal then. No, Cal and Ataro are sitting together. Oh, they're sitting together. Okay, I'll sit behind them. Um, if sitting right seat. behind them, there is a free seat, and you're sitting. Beside a particular celestial Floria. Ooh, a celestial. No, that's her name, Celestial Floria. Oh, I thought it was a celestial. <laughs> yeah, and you watch as um she she just kind of she's there in the back. She kind of looks at you as you make your way towards the seat, and. Her her entire like robe is covered with a handful of like vines, flowers, and stuff. And as you slowly make your way towards the seat, she kind of makes a bit of space to the right, and she gives you a smile, almost a very awkward smile, as your flames are slightly singeing a handful of her flowers on her cloak. Uh, and she just kind of gives I you apologize. a kind of look. Um, I zip up my um, suit where it'll try and cover almost all my flames, except for my, I guess even my hands, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> your your hair is the only thing that's like, just kind of burning. You're, you're yeah, essentially a torch the within the room. Fire. And the room <laughs> yeah. is pretty dark. Like you, you can see in the image here, the room is pretty dark, and, uh, aside from, you know, the sunlight making its way through the windows. But you yeah. are illuminating the rest of the room. So it's, it's pretty bright now in here. And she just kind of uh, gives you a teams. quick look. My name's Tal. Uh, greetings to you too. My name is Celestial Floria. I am a vocamancer, and you? Uh, math. <laughs> she just kind of looks at you. Okay, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> and she just gives you a like very awkward smile. Um, so you're a triad. You don't often see one of your kind across these places. Aside from Torrent and Storm, of course. And she points towards like the backhand seats. To the right of Cap Sally um, are the two uh, Nova... Uh, is it Nova Priad? The water... Uh, Voda Priads. Uh, the water elementals that just constantly are holding each other. They are quite adverse to you, especially. And as you turn your head towards the Voda Priads in the back, you see them just kind of glaring at you. 
uh, they look more like fours to me. Okay, whatever that means. Nice to meet you. Um, what what did you say your name was? Tal. Tal. Nice to meet you then. Um, and she kind of turns away from you, starts reading through, uh, the book, the massive book, just kind of skim reading through it. Um, and Cap Sally, you said that you were taking a seat in the far back. Yep, yep. You are sitting beside a rather very large, even for his kind, a very, very large Goliath. Dumb. Um, and he's about eight feet tall. Um, you watch as his like muscles are just breaking through the robe, and it's just like he's taking up most of the space of the seat. Thankfully, you're small, so you still have a bit of your own, uh, you know, a bit of your own space. But he, as as soon as you kind of turn your head towards him, um, you see this mask like on his face. He turns quickly towards you. Just uh, through it, you can see that he's like almost maybe happy. You can see his eyes and you can just hear him go. <clears throat> Caps just looks up at him and waves. Hi. Hi. And he turns away, he looks towards the center of the room. And so with that, as you've made your small kind of uh, conversations with the people there. Um, the orc in front, the instructor in the middle. He immediately turns to each and every one of you. Um, has a small smile. You see his like toothy grin. He has two tusks on the left and right hand side of his uh, like mouth poking through his uh, lips. And you can see him kind of grinning. Magic is powerful, and we all understand that, correct? Yes. And he turns towards you, um, Tal. You see him kind of reach towards the air, and uh, just kind of reaching across uh, you see a small like metal ball start to fly across the in front and he's he moves his hand across the metal balls he's essentially reading braille with magic <laughs> as he wow. like skips well, skims cool. his hand through the metal balls he looks towards you Eldor Talandi from Nak, it would seem three only passed in your maydays Curriculum, you among them, quite powerful as it would seem. Your magic, very rare, even amongst your kind. And welcome in my class. As the small magic uh, metal balls like fall on his like pedestal again, um, you see now that in on his pedestal is a large like. Um, large area where, with sand uh, just kind of in the middle and there's a handful of metal balls there and he turns towards um, each and every one of you um, <clears throat> my name is simple I am your instructor and you will call me Naz short for Naznaga I come from a land beyond, to a place many of you might know from stories, in the kingdom of Suladar, within the kingdom itself, in the city of Amor. If any of you know of this place, you will know that hardships have occurred there, and hardships I have passed through to become a mage of this standing. And I will not have any of my students be any less, any more inferior 
than myself. So understand this now. You will learn that magic has many forms, and all magic is accepted. Are we clear? Uh, silent nod. Yep. And he, Tal doesn't do anything. <clears throat> he kind of reaches his hand once more, and you see the metal balls uh, start kind of uh, transforming into the braille. Ataro, great flare. Your family might retain that greatness, but you have yet to make your own. So answer me this, Great Flare. How many known forms of magic do we have up to this date? It depends on uh, whether you want to talk about the uh, overarching categories or the more specific names. If we are talking about the categories, I believe we have four, sir. You are not wrong. One score to you. And you watch as the metal ball in front of him forming your name in Braille starts to thin out into a small, small coin and fly straight into your pocket. E. Anyone else would like to answer? Everyone roll me initiative as we start <laughs> doing... Time. <laughs> Who's oh, time? God. Yikes. I, I opened the fucking uh, group chat just to check the known forms of magic. <laughs> I'm ready, bro. I'm fucking ready. I'll do initiative. Just um, click the initiative in your um, character sheet. It did, the word you initiative. To roll. No, you no, wanted you... to send the... Uh, yeah, just the character sheet. It's fine, right? It said that you want to send the result of this photo to turn tracker, yes. but no valid token is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, who's left? Who hasn't rolled? Oh, it's just a cow. There you go. Right. Bruh. Bruh. Now, I was fiddling with something earlier. But it seems as though it unfortunately did not save, but that's fine. Um, as you see a handful of people start raising their hands, two of them, one is the goblin and one is the very large goliath to your side. Um, they both raise their hands. There you go. And it seems as though, Capselli, you're up first. Right. Would you like to answer? Oh, the same question? Yep, same question. How many known forms of magic is there? Um, I, I believe it was 22, sir. And you watch him kind of look strangely off towards you. You are not wrong. But most of those are sub- Magics. Give me full magic only. As he throws out a single score off towards you. Yippee. Next in line. Cal. You managed to beat out everyone um, ahead of you, or rather behind you. Um, you would you like to answer? Forms of magic, right? Yep, forms of magic. Uh, it's not subcategory, it's four. And no? he turns towards you. Four are the main forms of magic. But under those are not categories. There are four categories. Elemento Magus, Animagus, Verumagus, and Zabramagus. 
But if we are talking about non-categories, non-sub-magics, there is only a handful. How many? I think it's 34, sir. Sir. And he just kind of gives you a sigh. Perhaps you will learn some other time. But for now, he turns towards, um, who's up next? Let me see. Oh, between you and spider bait. Oh no, between you and Marathag, the massive Goliath. Talandi, roll me. Oh, what's your dexterity, actually? It's a 14. 14. And for this guy, oh, you're up ahead. Talandi, um, the orc in front of you, um, Instructor Nas, gives you a look. Why is anti magic forbidden? I don't know what anti-magic is. I'm saying that truthfully, by the way. And uh, you can yeah. just, you can hear him kind of snort through his nose. Just <laughs> and you. And he reaches out for his hand again, reaches through. Marathag River Fist. Inumale. First of your kind from your clan. Terramancer, it would seem. Why is anti-magic forbidden? And you see him just kind of... He's not even standing. He's already looked... He's, he looks like he's standing above you, just sitting down. And you can hear a very kind of thin, grainy voice. Anti-magic is forbidden, for it can kill mages. And some anti-magic is the reason why the sky dare exists. And the orc hands him three. Just flying, uh, flying across the, the kind of classroom into his uh, small pocket. Three scores. And you can see everyone give a small clap, even so, um, as you are here. Within my class, you will learn more than just how to cast a spell. You will learn what spells will suit you in particular. Some of you here might already understand what signature means. For example, Miss Eliza Castile. She points towards the woman in the far right. Born from two wizards who have been with us for quite some time. You have been gifted cartomancy, the magic of spell scrolls and paper. With that, you must understand what it means to be a cartomancer. Whereas, Mr. Ataro Great Flare. What would you say your magic signature is? Hmm. Uh, Ataro ponders for a moment. He's not really sure how to explain it. He looks back to the instructor. Well, you see, I dabble in various forms of elemental magics, and my life goal is to somehow uh, combine these elemental magics to create more complex versions of these spells. I assume that would make me an elementum magus uh, or elementum mancer, I believe is the term. And he gives you a nod. You will understand soon enough that one magic may be greater than the rest. 
Talandi Eldur of Nak. What is your signature magic? Dialectomancy. Then he nods, turns towards the elf sitting right beside you, Ataro. Cal Siglis. As he says that last name, you see a handful of people turn towards you, Cal. They seem to recognize your name. Even more so than the rest is one particular elf in the far back towards uh, just in front of Capsali. An elf by the name uh, of, seemingly at least, um, an elf by the name of Chomik. You know this because right in front of your small tables, where you can barely see, since you have to kind of reach over to see, there are names in front, written in magical ink, glowing in front, just floating in front of your tables. And as you turn towards that direction, you see her name, Margulite Chomik. And underneath that, Cyromancy. If any one of you can tell me what magic Cyromancy is, you get a point, uh, you get a score. All right, what nothing. is Cyromancy? It's acid magic. I believe. Yep. That's a score right oh, in your pocket was... as you have, uh, you see just acid magic there. And you see her kind of turn towards you with a kind of furrowed brow. She has um, she has bandages all over her mouth and throat. As she just kind of looks towards you, she waves her hand and words start to appear right in front of her. Um, make me a perception check. Me only? Yes. <clears throat> I don't talk to women. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't worry. She's not talking. She's writing the words in the air. And you can read, You're a Siglis from the I'm of our Empire? Question mark. Do I reply? I, I just nod. And uh, the word slowly changes as she continues to like wave her hand left and right. Uh, it seems as though we're in the middle of royalty. And she turns away and listens to the instructor. I do the like the generic question mark thing, like reaction. Huh? Don't then said. I'm, yeah, don't said. Then I look to the... I try to look at her. Then as I see her focusing, then I try to focus. Alright. And so with that, as, um, you know, as everyone essentially gets this um, small speech from your instructor, uh, instructor, uh, the, the orc in front of you at least, um, instructor Naz, you watch him kind of turn towards the door. I will give each and every one of you a moment for each other. You will learn that within this class, you are one of your kind, and you will learn to be with each other for however long it takes for you all to graduate. And so mingle and learn. After which, if you have had your fill, make your way towards the door and you will be led towards another instructor for your next course. And so he okay. starts to get out of his like, chair and he dimension doors away from uh, the room. Very high level spell just to get out. <laughs> <laughs> <Holy>. <laughs> Just a flex, right. man. You you will also note, by the way, why people are doing that. Um, who's? Let me see. Oh, Ataro, you're on the window side seat. 
Um, as you kind of look towards that, you're about maybe 500 to 600 feet up in the air. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, it's kind of funny, though. Like, what if you're out of yeah. spell slots? You're just stuck you're in the You're out of spell <laughs> slots. You, you can't leave anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mm. that's, that's what's happening there. So, anyone would like to do anything? Cup Sally mm. immediately stands up from her seat and walks up to Talandi. I will talk uh, to the deaf person. Is she a girl or a boy? I, I, I actually forgot. Yeah, she is a female. Elf? Yeah, she's Do a I female. I know her name. I got her name, yes. man. So they still know? Marg Lerite Chomik. Oh, that one, yeah. They have to write okay. the names. Okay. Trying to write all the names here. We had in our party notes, but. Marglerite Chomic. This is the acid lady, right? Yeah, she is Cyromancy. And then Celestial is Fungamancy, I'm guessing? Yeah. No, Celestial Fa uh, Floria is Vocamancy. Vocamancy, okay. That is summoning and then magic. Eliza is Stratomancy? Cartomancy, yes. Magic. Paper magic. Okay. And the Goliath dude, what's his name again? Marathag. He is Terramancy. An... Oh, like... Terramancy. Okay. And it's Storm and Torrent. Yeah, Storm and Torrent, but they haven't revealed, or at least you don't know what their magics are. Storm and Torrent. You can you can probably fucking... tell based on what they're, you know, what they are, but. Yep. Nonetheless. Yeah, there's a lot of people for you here. Um, you see, you see like a handful of people already like mingling and whatnot. Um, and yeah, what what are you guys doing? I try to talk to Margalite and ask her what's up or something. Like, what does she mean? The like wrestler, holy. There's like the a fucking koi no katachi, bro. <laughs> koi no katachi. She's Tiny she's kind of just you know sitting down, and you watch as um. You know, she she behaves pretty much like a noble uh, in your class, at least. Um, she has her hand on her kind of lower left jaw as she's looking out into, you know, the window. And she turns towards you as soon as you, like, make your way across. And she waves her hands and words start to appear in front of her. Um, and it reads, uh, what do you want? Uh, what do you need? Uh, what did you mean by... In the middle of a uh, royal university. What did you mean by your last rest? The words start to change and it says, You're a Siglis, are you not? Yes. And what of it? Yeah, you are of the royal family. And so we are in the presence of royalty. Did you mean that as a bad thing? Or what? It will Should depend. Oftentimes, nobles don't understand what it takes, what sacrifice everything entails. I just hope that you're not one of those kinds of nobles. For example, the Great Flare back there. And the words turn into a arrow that points towards a tarot. Do I see this arrow? Yeah. Wait, does he, what language is this actually? What, what is she typing or what font? I think. Oh. It's in, in, yeah, it makes sense. In <laughs> windings. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> no, it's in it's in uh, Elvish script. Oh, I, I can I can read this though. So I look at it and I'm like, "Are you are you talking about me?" And I walk towards the two of them, and the arrow okay. slowly switches and uh, turns into yes. I'll try to assure her, but like not really be that aggressive, but like just to make sure that uh, maybe you'll uh, like you'll find out or something. But for now, uh, you can call me cow. And can I call? What can I call? You? Type type. Yeah, and she just uh, the the first half of her name pretty much just Mark. Mark. Alright, then I I I I offer my hand for a handshake. And I take it as reference. There is 
Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, my guy is like speed running the light novel right now. <laughs> you know that the the double skip button he clicked. <laughs> yeah. uh, as there as there cool their, hair already. As they're into the introductions, I look at both of them and uh Well, seeing as the two of you are occupied, I believe I am not needed anymore. Uh I am Ataro, the two of you are. And uh, I, you know, the I, name just transforms into her name, Margalite Chomik. Carl Seglis. Wow. And the drop uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and every time. Like, <laughs> every Very time well. This Carl Seglis, like, their sparkles just appear. <laughs> and I, I nod. Like, Very well. Uh, good day. And I leave. <laughs> and I was like, why the fuck was I called? <laughs> I'm like wondering. <laughs> All right, and Hi. um, yeah, she she reaches her hand towards you and gives it a quick shake. As I observe her hands, just like the bandages and stuff, like it is, is it like burns from her training or something? Um, she doesn't have like bandages, uh, bandages all over her body, just her throat and mouth. Oh, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what's the reason for your? The bandages your Yo, that's a personal question, bro. You gotta save it for the third day. <laughs> 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 and, 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 yeah, she like waves her hand again, and uh, words change in front um, of you, and it just says, "Well, it's good that we have to uh, quickly get this out of the way." Yes, it's from my personal training. It's an accident. A bit too powerful a magic that uh, burned me instead of something else. Alright. Then I hope you get well soon. Ah, then, what the fuck is this? <laughs> ah. she, she just kind of looks towards you uh, and she says, I will not. This is unfortunately permanent and it has left me with one disability I can no longer use voice for my magic only materials and let's just say gestures um oh that's that's actually pretty pretty cool i'm not pitying her but uh i'm uh maybe like somewhere along our studies maybe we could learn a spell that could help heal your uh Injuries, but in the meantime, uh, keep working, I guess. Then I'll see you around. Or, or you know, I could ask you to go to the next one. Either way, we are right, 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 right. <laughs> and you watch uh, the words just transform into a smiley face, essentially. Uh, like a very simple smiley face that just kind of flies across and then like disappears. Imagine she flirting and she does this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, she go like, she be like this, bro. <laughs> and would you, she go like that. <laughs> you know what? And, she, and if she cried, she go like this. <laughs> and when she's blushing, she goes like this. <laughs> what are you doing? Man, what a character. Wait, huh? What? Cal, I guess. <laughs> Does she want to meet anyone or something like after after this? No, after this current thing. Is she going to meet to go around and meet everyone or what? Or no. If she has plans to that's what I'm asking. Oh my god. You, you, oh, see, you see the word just kind of uh, immediately change. And then she's just like uh, well we have to go to the next course and Whoever's right. the instructor there, I guess I'm meeting them. Alright, then I ask her to if we can go together or something. Bro, what the Damn! fuck? Hey, sure. <laughs> then the words just change to sure. And um, yeah. they won. All right. <laughs> Bro, After... she's holding like the paper in front of her face. It's like. Trying to hide the, hide the blush. <laughs> After that, uh, Talandi, uh, everyone else aside from Cal, what are you guys doing? Uh, Talandi has his arms crossed 
and he looks like he's chanting something. I will, in uh, fact, uh, do chanting, like, the numbers a couple of, of wisdom saving throws. Oh, 14, there's a goblin in the corner enough. of your vision. I open my eyes and I can actually see them as actual people or actual, like, not numbers. <sighs> so you while. see, like, the stats. <laughs> you see just stats. Yeah. And if you do that, <laughs> you focus for a bit and you see a people. <laughs> yeah, normal. Like, how people see other people normally. Uh, I, 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 as he's, like, doing that, I'm walking. You see, like, uh, Atar walking up to Landina. They're trying to cast a spell on everyone, are we? I'm... No, just for me. Greetings, my name's Tal. Greetings, I am Ataro of House Great Flare. Surely you have heard of that? Uh... No. I think. <clears throat> uh... So what do you do? Um... Just asking. Well, I don't uh, do much right now, but uh, I s I'm, um, uh, 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 he starts breaking down. I cast magics. Yes, I cast elemental magics. By the way, right. when you said uh, I cast magics, everyone like stands up almost and like prepares themselves to fight. And as you start, no, like, no, 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 I mean, I mean, in the 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 in the sense of a uh, you know my profession instead of you know I I cast no 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 uh, you know be, be at ease everyone. And you watch uh, everyone just like slowly like glaring at you, almost taking their seats one by one. Uh, but I yes, see. I. I am an uh, elemental magus, uh, mancer. I, I, I'm not very familiar with those uh, sorts of words. And you just hear from the uh, back uh, before, before Tal continues to speak. Mm -hmm. You hear from the back, Torrent and, um, Torrent and Storm, I believe. Um, you see the two of them just kind of shout out. And what of being an elemental magus? Yeah, what of being an element, Magus? You're not doing much. Yeah, you're not doing much. And you two would be? Torrent. Storm. Now and your priads. signature? Aeromancy. Hydromancy. And you are nothing less than ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Well, if you want be if you want me to be specific, I am well versed in the arts of pyromancy, cryomancy, and uh, is there a is there a mancy for storms? Um, uh, electromancy. Yes. Hmm. You think you're funny? He thinks it's funny. I think I am better than you. Just because you're a great flare doesn't make you great. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, the great yeah. flares are smart. They learn magics. I breathe magic. I snap my fingers and a small spark appears in my hands. And they just both kind of turn away from you. We'll see soon enough Wait. if you're capable. Yeah, that's right. So, does that mean you're a generalist? Uh, I believe that would be an appropriate term, yes. And the two of you are specialists. Da, 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 specializing da, in that. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. And they just kind of nod, almost in perfect unison. Well... I am, I'm both, technically. You see- I believe that's an oxymoron, no? Yes, but I see the weave not as uh, itself. I see it as this, and I start drawing uh, numbers. And uh, you see Torrent and Storm both just kind of not exactly understanding what you're doing. 
and both of them just kind of look towards um you know the rest of the class you see everyone here has gone through a lot of things yeah that's exactly right and you have yet to prove to me and to my brother here that you are worth giving a damn and you have yet to do anything worth giving a damn so let it be clear until you prove to everyone in this class that you're enough to be a student in this prestigious academy you are not exactly much to look at if I wanted to be lectured, I would have gone to the next class. Uh, we can calm down. Uh, you there, goblin. What are you doing here? Yep, Sally's just been patiently waiting. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a heated <laughs> argument between the, 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 the other two ages, though. Or the three of them, rather. Uh, Tarandi, I think, was your name? Yes. Thanks for uh, earlier, uh, General Assembly, back at the trial fight. And oh, you were like... the one with the <laughs> negative values. Eh? <laughs> and nothing. <laughs> she oh. extends her hand for a handshake <laughs> as a sign of gratitude. My clothes are here. I can do handshakes. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what do you do? Um, pi 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 pyromancy. Fire. <laughs> you mean like how, like me? Y yes, about that. Um, how how do you not burn yourself? I am made of fire. Eh? Here. I swipe my head. I turn bald and then fire grows back. <laughs> you turn bald for like a quick second and it just like ir uh, ignites again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. Wait, so does, does that mean... Um... <laughs> uh, yeah. Can somebody start playing with <laughs> yeah, your hair? Yeah, you <laughs> Yep. <laughs> what do you, what do, oh. you do with the... <laughs> Talandi's hair. <laughs> it's like <laughs> moving earth around. I make it the fucking afro or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you like start moving Whoa. it around. You turn you turn like half of his hair into a duck shape. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Th that, that's about it. Thanks for earlier. And she goes back to her seat. Wait, uh, you there, Great Flame. I have a question. That's a great flare to you. And yes. Uh, sorry, uh... Was your family involved in a cult? A cult? You dare Wasn't say a that the great, great flair family of the Sedalian Theocracy would be so low as to associate with the likes of cults? Well, I think I heard a rumor somewhere in Knack where it was involved with like uh, some important figures this cult you see well Why i you're... assure you uh, i have known nothing of the sort if that uh, is a uh, matters of one of my family members i suggest you take it up with them fair Apologies, I am quite uh, defensive of my own family. Uh, they are, after all, all I have. And you see, well, as um, as you say that, <laughs> um, you see as a dragonborn, or rather a Draylon, slowly make his way towards you. And what are we exactly without our family? Isn't that right? Ooh, he's... Pretty badass. Look at him. Ah, and who might you be, my fellow Draylon? My Hello. name is Yardius Balwarum. You see, my family Yardius. was 
let's say, uh, a great part in taking a stand against the winds of Yviet. You faced against Yviet herself. If you had been there, you would have seen how that frost dragon destroyed a portion of the Aegean Empire to the south. Though we managed to keep it to a minimum. That is what our family is. I respect the tenacity uh, and uh, hope that your family is doing well. And yours, the name of having heard before. Great Flare, was it? What does your family do? Well, uh, the, long of short, the long and short of it is uh, my family was responsible for providing order in the Sedalian theocracy. That is as much as you need to know right now. Then perhaps we must establish connections within our family. As is rightfully so. Hmm. And what could your family offer to the House Great Flare? The gift that only the Draylon can. And he gives you a quick nod and with that kind of small uh, message, he just kind of leaves for a moment. You don't know exactly what the gift that only the Draylon can give, but it seems pretty powerful. I'm scratching my head thinking I have to bring it up to my parents after this. <laughs> yeah. More and politics. With that, after a while of just kind of mingling with each other, you know, things start to settle. Everyone starts, you know, getting up, making their way towards the next class. And um, yeah, what are you guys doing? I'm waiting for Marge. You know. Eee, eee, eee. Eee. <laughs> yeah, my guy's Marge, winning. Marg is just pretty Probably. much, you know, after after everyone starts getting up, she also does the same thing. Um she she you know makes her way towards the door, waves her fingers and stuff like that, and words appear in front. Um well, off we go then. Alright, then I follow her. All right, and she reaches for the handle and disappears into a thin light. Uh, Atara's probably going to leave as well while giving bombastic side eyes to Storm and Torrent, and then leaves. Same thing. Um, I just uh, shake my head. Now all I see is numbers again. <laughs> <clears throat> and I also head out. Right. Um, I assume everyone just starts making their way towards the next class. Yes. yes. Yo. All right. So, boom. Next class. Uh oh. Uh oh. Immediately, this is where we died. you you oh, step no, on um, what seems to be like water rushing through a, a river in front of you. You see all oh, no. the student classmates just uh you know on the left and right hand side everyone is kind of together for the most part. Tal and you is see dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? Tal is dying. Why? Hello? Why? It's oh. water. Oh. Yeah, it's water. Okay. <laughs> no, he he's like uh yeah, you're suit, pretty much fine. The suit's yeah. Bit. The suit's yeah. there. You're you're not like a Charmander that dies when. <laughs> oh my God, that's so <laughs> the, sad. The, the tail dies out. You know, it's uh, if you get if water touches you, essentially it evaporates and or uh, it just kind of kills your fire for a quick moment and then it and, and then it comes yeah, back. Yeah, should be but, fine yeah. most of the time. Yeah, so you know, as you as you all like, look around and try to figure out where exactly you are. Slowly from the shadows, someone makes uh, someone makes their way through, and it's an image of a particularly strange-looking man. His face is a bit, you know, he, he's not good-looking. Even more so when his face is a bit crooked and his jaw seems to be 
broken for the most part. And as he makes his way through, you could swear that you're looking at some kind of ghoul or undead. And he, you watch as he casts spell, and immediately his face like retracts back into place, and he kind of turns towards you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Brandis, and I am your instructor for your course, figuratively known as primary, or rather practical magic application course. During my classes, you will be here. Would you or would anyone like to guess exactly where we are? A score will be given for the first one to give an answer. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> I'm not answering. I, I, I got I got nothing. I'm not answering. Uh, I'm like not very familiar. I don't think I've traveled very far because I'm mostly in the theocracy. So this is within the theocracy still. So if you want, well, I, to I, I'm in the city. I'm a, <laughs> oh, I don't yeah, know. He's city. a city boy. The city boy. Um, if anyone would like to try and figure out where you are, roll me a survival or a nature check. Okay. Yay. Survival or nature. Barowski. Cal, you do oh. not know anything. Um, Cap Sally, being a goblin, you might know a few things. Um, but unfortunately, it is not enough. You you just know that you're in some kind of woods, probably in the same you know, uh, continent as uh, where you were earlier. But unfortunately, you don't know. Um, as the man uh, in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, do we know the like um, the like surrounding things? Then may I at least can I at least know that or not? Uh, what do you mean surrounding things? Is it dead trees, alive trees, or what? Yeah, it like, is. Anything? It looks like dead trees, but they're actually pretty much more living than maybe some of the trees that you've seen in the Imovar Empire. Because these trees are like moving around like they're alive almost. Like walking. Uh, I'll try to raise my hand then. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, you were there. Um, where do you think uh, we are? Are we at the the Veer the Veerwood, sir? Or my... And he gives you a nod. Good job. He, uh, you watch as Ooh. within your pocket, on uh, a uh, thing appears, a uh, score appears, and he goes. How do you find these? I'm like looking around too. This here is the Veerwood. It's a place known to be extremely dangerous, and has taken the lives of countless mages in the past. A year ago, when we were holding a trial here. Out of the 17 students that we had, three, unfortunately, passed away here. And so you might ask exactly why we are here within the Verwood. It is simple. We are going to be applying practical magic, and as such, every time it is my class, you will be casting your spells surviving within the Verwood, of course, with some given objectives. For example, I might ask you to look for a certain flower that only grows within the Verwood, or locate a certain animal. Nonetheless, you will be using your skills and abilities within the Verwood. Note that these trees he knocks on like one of the trees and immediately it turns like the tree's entire trunk like uproots itself and turns towards you. And you see this horrifying image of pretty much someone stuck within a tree. These trees are or used to be students like yourselves, each and every one. Unfortunately, their soul might not be with us today. But what remains of their body has become compost for these 
deathly trees. And so I would like to remind everyone that this is a serious matter. And you will understand sooner, more than later, what it means and what it takes to be a mage of the Songspire College. Are we clear on that? Yep. Yes. And might I inf emphasize, rather, that certain parts of the Verwood are forbidden. And you will see signs that you are delving far too, let's see, far too deep within the forest. Please make sure not to cross those lines, otherwise you will be met with creatures that may snatch you within a second. With that, I leave you to your devices for your first task of our practical magic application. Find your way out of this forest and return to the Songspire College. That is all. And he disappears back into the shadows of the trees. As that is where we end our session for today, in the middle of the forest, with you having to make your way out. And so Damn. with that, <clears throat> I would like to ask everyone, how many scores you guys have collected within the day? Four. Two. I only got one. I also have four, but I have five total. All right. You're, someone's already halfway there to making their first spell. And if you don't know what the mechanics are for making a spell, uh, you guys can find it in the right-hand side in the journal under Rules and Mechanics. There's spellcrafting right there. Wait, Cass, I have a question. Did Mr. Ghoul introduce himself? I, I don't think I did. Mr. Ghoul I never know. introduced himself. No, I don't believe so. Yeah. He just said that he was your instructor for the practical magic application course. But that's it. With that first session, any questions, comments, concerns? Anything you'd like to say about our first session for now? Uh... I'll say it for Taco. Do we level up? <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> how, far can we, how far can we take our, our interaction with the NPC? Pretty far. As far as we can. Yeah. yeah. Um... Like, Thanks for time, guys. Persona. Persona. 